Hi everyone, welcome back to the Fargo 4 Show, the first edition in 2015 of the 4 Show. I'm your host, Trevor Peterson. Joined this week by Force Defenseman, Justin Beaudry. Justin, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Justin, you're from Manitoba, so not too far from North Dakota. La Brokerie, Manitoba, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Tell me a little bit about where La Brokerie, Manitoba is. Uh, La Brokerie is just about uh, 45 minutes uh, <clears throat> southeast of Winnipeg. Okay, so not far at all. So as opposed to some of your teammates that we've had on the show this season who didn't have any idea where Fargo was maybe or any experience with it, you've come down to North Dakota and been in, in the in the state of North Dakota before growing yeah, up. Yeah, for sure. As a kid, I uh, came down a few times to play some uh, hockey tournaments and then coming down with the family just to do some shopping and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been here for sure. So how nice is it to be, you know, playing your first season of USHL hockey to be close to, close to home? It is nice. I... Uh, I have family that comes down a lot, family and mm -hmm. friends actually that come down. It's only a three and a half hour drive from home and they come down and probably do some shopping and stuff and then come watch a game, so it's awesome. Nice. Now you played the past couple of seasons in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League with the Steinbach Pistons. What about the difference between the level in the Manitoba Junior <coughs> Hockey League and the USHL? What's the biggest thing you've noticed this year? Yeah, I've noticed a few things. I think uh, uh, first and foremost, the speed, it's, mm -hmm. just, uh, it's a lot quicker. And then uh, I'd say the detail to the game, just uh, just the level of detail, just you know paying attention in the defensive zone. And there's so much more detail in the offensive zone mm. as well. How has the change been for you? Has it been easy change? Has it been? Did it take you a few games, or was it pretty seamless? <laughs> uh, it was okay. I think the first uh, five to fifteen games, mm. you know, it took me a while. I got caught uh, flat-footed, I'd say. Mm. And uh, no, but uh, Byron, our D coach, and and uh, the other uh, players on the team really helped me. Uh, get up to the level of par, I guess, to, to the level. Now, you're a defenseman. Um, zero goals this season, but you've tied for the team high with 14 assists. Is yeah. that something that, as a defenseman, is that something you kind of have always done? Pass the puck well, bent high in those assist numbers, or has that maybe surprised you a little bit this year? Uh, no, I think it's always been uh, you know, a strength of mine in passing the puck and just creating opportunities mm -hmm. for our forwards. But, uh, yeah, that's zero goals. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of always in the back of your head, but I'm still getting a lot of chances, and... Uh, you know, it will go in sooner or later. I was going to ask you, is that something that you think about? Or as a defenseman, <coughs> do they not worry that much about it? Do you not think about it and you know it will happen sooner or later? Uh, yeah, as a defenseman, I guess, like, uh, you know, you don't want to worry about it too much. But, uh, you know, when you do go to sleep, it is in the back of your head. And you try not to lose sleep over it. But at the same time, I'm just trying to do my job mm. and keeping the puck out of the net. So, uh, yeah. What do you like to do uh, in your free time? Uh, in my free time, I like to... Uh, just kind of relax, uh, watch movies, and uh, hang out with the guys. I also like to I, uh, I like to read. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you said you're maybe a little bit of a golfer too. Yeah, yeah. In uh, I guess the summertime, uh, you know, I'm not the best, but I go out with my brother, and my dad a lot, and a few friends, and I enjoy golfing a lot. Good up in good golfing up in La Brokery? Yeah, actually, we have a course uh, right uh, right in my backyard. Nice. So, uh, yeah. Just you a five-minute walk. Sneak out there a little bit yeah. in the summer. Uh, now, you've committed to play hockey at Bemidji State, so how nice is it just to, to not have to worry about that? You know that you've done that. Uh, you're not the first forced guy to, to go there either. A teammate as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, teammate uh, Cole Bukesen is committed as well. He's uh, just a year older than me too, so mm -hmm. uh, that'll be pretty cool uh, playing with him there. What would you say, uh, Justin, is your biggest strength? What's your best aspect on the ice? Uh, I think just my, uh, I'd say my vision on the ice, mm -hmm. I think uh, breaking out the puck, uh, I'd say my vision allows me just to see players in the open and, uh, you know, put the puck in their hands. And how about the biggest thing that you want to improve that you know you, you still got to <coughs> improve a lot in your game? Uh, probably, uh, you know, I can think of two things, probably my speed and, and foot speed and then uh, just, uh, you know, shooting to get that puck in the net. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, more with Justin in a bit, but first, since our last show, uh, the Force have played six games, three home, three on the road. Let's get caught up a little bit and show you a bit how they did. On New Year's Eve, we'll start out with, this one was uh, December 31st. They hosted the Des Moines Buccaneers. First period, Des Moines with a great chance, but Joe <coughs> Widmer's denied by Robbie Bedouin. Great save. He had 41 on the day. On the other end, the rebound comes to C.J. Hayes with a lot of open net, but he can't get the puck up in the air, and Ryan Rook makes one of his 38 saves. Force with another chance on the power play. The shot by our guest, Mr. Beaudry, is redirected in by Kyle Sylvester, but the ref says no goal. Sylvester's stick was too high. Thoughts on that, Justin? Uh, yeah, I guess a uh, good call by the ref. It was just uh, slightly high. You could kind of see it from my angle, but uh, when they were reviewing it, I was hoping uh, they'd give it to us. one nothing Bucks after one. The Force would get a Mikey Icemont power play goal in the third to tie the game and send it to overtime, and in OT, Zach Yon 
got the game winner for the Force, 2-1 victory. Force played a clean game also in that one with the just four penalty minutes compared to 16 for Des Moines. All right, after New Year's Day off, the Force then traveled to first place Sioux City for two straight games. On Friday, January 2nd was game one. The Force were 3-1 and one versus first place Musketeers. Force strike first. Austin Pooley wires the wrister in. one nothing Force less than seven minutes in, but all Sioux City after that. They scored the next five goals including three in the first period in the span of three and a half minutes to lead 3-1 after one. Sioux City goes on to win it. 5-1 to one was the final. We mentioned last game how the force were just four penalty minutes. This game, 25 minutes in the box. Sioux City had 27, but the force couldn't capitalize, going 0-4 for 4 on the power play. Same two teams the very next night, and it turned out uh, kind of the same way for the force. The force lose 4-2 to two to Sioux City on Saturday, January 3rd. Goals by Stevens and Morelli for the force. Robbie Bedouin had 35 saves. The Force now 3-3 three and three on the season versus first place Sioux City. The following weekend, the Force return home with back-to-back -back games versus Des Moines again. Friday, January 9th, scoreless in the second. Fargo's Brody Stevens threads the pretty pass to Mikey Isamont for the goal. Start of a hot streak or Isamont, one nothing Force. They trail 2-1 in the third when T.J. Rue finds the rebound, waits, circles, and fires it in. That tied it at two. Later in the third period, now the Force with a great scoring opportunity. Matt McCardle... Just can't quite put the puck in the net. Look at how close this one comes as we take another look. And that was big, too, because Des Moines then scored with just a couple of minutes left. And Des Moines comes up with the 3-2 victory. Identical numbers for shots on goal for both teams, 30 shots. A chance, though, on the next night for redemption for the Force. Saturday, January 10th versus those same Des Moines Buccaneers in the first period. The Force, Dennis Smirnov puts home the rebound. That's the first of two goals on the night for Smirnov. 1-0 Force. Same period now. Isamont, he had his name, uh, we've heard, you've heard his name mentioned throughout this show. He grabs the rebound and wraps it around the goal, uh, beating the goalie to the post 2 0 after the first period. Take another look at that one. That's pretty. However, Sioux City, or sorry, Des Moines would rally to send it to overtime, tied at two, but in the OT, Smirnoff comes up with the game winner 112 in the force, win it 3 2, despite going 0 6 on the power play. The next day in Omaha, again the same 3 2 score, but the force come out on the losing end this time. 3-2 Omaha. The final was in a shootout, actually, as the Lancers win the shootout. 2-1 Isamont with his third goal in three games. So after the Force go 2-3-1 and one in those last six games, let's bring up the standings and take a look. Sioux City still on top with a 20-10-3 record. Omaha second, Tri-City third. And the Force sitting right there in sixth place, 14-13-5. Justin, you guys have pretty much kept your uh, head above water, head above that 500 mark, and you still are this season with 33 points. A lot of teams in those 30s. What are your thoughts when you take a look at those standings right there? Yeah, it's, it's really tight. I think, you know, just three points behind uh, Sioux Falls, and then uh, they're just one point behind uh, whoever's ahead of them, and then uh, it's just a dogfight. I think if we could win those uh, those overtime games or those shootouts, you know, we, we've lost a lot of points there, but, uh, you know, it's it's close, and we're making a run here. We talked uh, before uh, taping here that this has really been kind of an up-and-down season. You, you guys haven't gotten on a real hot streak, yep. but you haven't gotten on a real losing streak either. It's kind of been a couple up and a couple down, or one up and one down. Do you guys feel like you're just on the cusp of, of changing that around here, or is that what it's going to take maybe to move up in those standings a little bit here and get a, get a hot streak going? Yeah, for sure. Like Just like I said, uh, you know, if we can start winning those games where we're losing those small points, mm -hmm. um, we're going to get rolling here. And, uh, you know, it's really tight in the standings. So we just got to win those, win those games, and we'll, we'll be fine here. What's the biggest thing, what, maybe in the last month or so, what has Coach Marks preached about you guys? What's the, is there one or two things that he's kind of on you about, or, hey, guys, let's do this better, you know, uh, recently? Uh, just mainly competing, I think. Uh, you know, we work hard in practice, and then we compete hard, and then, you know, just, uh, just competing in games. We, mm -hmm. we, 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 have, we always have good first periods, and then we struggle mm -hmm. in the second period. So probably that's another thing, too, is coming out in the second period where instead of giving up two goals, you know, holding them to none, and then we, we're always strong in the third. Coach Marks has been around a long time, a long-time hockey guy. What, uh, what do you like about him as a coach? Uh, I like uh, he's, uh, he's an aggressive coach. Uh, you know, he, he tells you the truth, and then, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, if you take it personal, and then you, you won't be able to move on, but mm -hmm. uh, you just take all the crit criticism, but it's all constructive, so mm -hmm. that's what I enjoy. Um, let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Force here now. In the next couple of weeks, the Force will have four games all on the road. Nothing at Shields Arena these next four games. Friday and Saturday, January 16th and 17th, the Force will be at the Lincoln Stars. The, uh, the Stars one spot below the Force in the standings. 
And then the next weekend, January 23rd and 24th, the force will visit the uh, Muskegon in Michigan. They are a good team, 19-10-3. They're in the Eastern Conference of that division. Well, what's your thoughts on the uh, upcoming four games, Justin? Uh, I think it'll be good. I think Lincoln's, uh, you know, they're a tough competitor as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully we could come out with uh, two wins there. That'd be huge. And then, uh, you know, I haven't really seen Muskegon, but I know they're doing well. So, you know, we, we need to steal one, one for sure from them. Do you ever worry when you're playing a team that's below you guys in the standings? Do you ever worry that sometimes the guys may get overconfident or this is going to be a couple easy wins for us or is that not this type of team? Uh, no, not really worried. Uh, you know, every team in this league is, uh, is a team we could lose against. And, you know, every night uh, teams compete hard. And, mm -hmm. you know, we do a good job of keeping everyone uh, level-headed. And the guys are we're, we're really good for that. Now, uh, back to you for a quick uh, couple more minutes here. Uh, one of the things you, we were talking about is that English is not actually your first language. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, no, I was born, in a, I guess, in a little French community. My, my first language is French. Uh, I was born in Brandon, Manitoba, which is just, uh, you know, west in Manitoba. Mm -hmm. And we moved all around, but we usually grew up in a French community. So I grew up learning French, and I've been going to a French school since, uh, you know, through grade one to all the way through grade 12. Does, uh, is there anybody else on the force that, that you can speak uh, French with? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, I guess TJ Root uh, likes to think he knows how to speak French. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a few guys that know uh, some here and there. But uh, uh, that's, that's about it. Can you, uh, as we close the show here, can you, can you throw it to, uh, to uh, uh, a little break with, uh, with some French stuff? Say, uh, we'll be back or we'll see you next time on the Fargo Force Show. Yeah. Uh, on va vous voir à la pr pr uh, prochaine fois sur la télévision de Fargo Force. All right, there you go. The first French ever spoken on the <coughs> Fargo Force. So, Justin, thanks for being here. Nice yeah, job. No, thanks for having me. All right, we'll see you next time on the Force Show, everybody.